a praying woman is a dangerous woman. That's just something about her. A determined woman on her knees praying for her home, her family, her children, her church. You want to see power? Start praying, woman of God. I value the role of a godly man in the home, a father in the home. But I want to speak to the women. Many, many times, the first person in a home, the first person in our families to be sensitive to God is a praying woman. So I'm speaking to you, mom. I'm speaking to you, lady. I'm speaking to you, grandma. Keep on praying. Keep on seeking after God. You can have a powerful, godly influence in your home, on your family, on your marriage, at your job. God can use you to make an impact, to be the vessel through which he starts a revival. There is no one who can take your place, woman of God. You are needed as a resource in the body of Christ. Don't stop praying. You're part of the defense line for your family against the devil. And we need praying women who stand up and say no. This far, Satan, and no further. Women of God, we need to pray. A praying woman is a dangerous woman. Prayer is a force and in the hands of a virtuous woman. The weapon of prayer is fierce and unstoppable. The power of prayer is the power of God. Prayer gives you strength in the middle of a storm. Be strong, strong in prayer. We are called to pray without ceasing, to pray always, to pray with perseverance. The battle is fought on your knees. The battle is won on your knees. We need praying women. We need praying mothers. We need to teach our daughters to pray, our sons to pray. Prayer is a lifeline. And on the other side is your answer from God. Prayer is your weapon. When the enemy attacks, pray. In your day of trouble, ladies, pray. You can't make it in this life without prayer. You can't live without prayer. At some point in your life, you will realize prayer changes things. Don't wait for trouble to come so that you pray. Don't wait for an attack for you to realize how important it is to pray. Pray always. Pray diligently and pray with authority. When you need a provider, get on your knees and pray. When you feel lost, find yourself in prayer. When you're broken, find healing in prayer. When you're in need, find safety and seek refuge in prayer. When you're tired, endure in prayer. Don't just go through trials. Don't just go through life. Pray through life. Let me tell you what happens when you pray. You cast down strongholds, break generational curses, wage war in the spirit. You break addiction. You gain knowledge in prayer. You build character in prayer. You bring the love of God back into your home, into your relationship. Everything about you changes when you are devoted to prayer. Breakthroughs are found in prayer. You find peace in your home through prayer. the power of a praying woman. If you're a praying lady, don't stop now. If you're a praying mother, don't stop now. If you're a praying wife or a young girl, then press on. Keep praying because now more than ever is the time that we need women of God to stand up in prayer. Now is the time to seek God. We need women of faith and prayer. We need women filled with more faith than fear. It's these kinds of women that can alter the destinies of their own families, of their children, of everything and everyone around them. Let me tell you something about a praying woman. A praying woman is dangerous. A woman of faith is dangerous. She goes to war in her prayer closet. The Shunammite woman's faith was so strong that she took the lifeless body of her son straight to the feet of God's servant, Elisha. And she was like, God, you deal with that. And I'm speaking to you right now. Take it to the Lord and tell him, God, 
You deal with this. You deal with my finances. You deal with my business. You deal with my kids, with my supervisor at work. The power of a praying woman can be seen on Hannah. Crying, pleading, but more importantly, praying to the Lord. Give me a child. And her prayer moved God. You see, the power of a praying woman will push past her surroundings. It'll push past people's opinions. It pushes past the holier-than-thou people in church. It pushes boundaries and touches the hem of Jesus' garment. Let prayer be our portion. Let prayer be our passion. Let prayer be our practice. Let our prayers be intentional and intense. Let us be found at the throne of grace every day, every day. Let us be found in our prayer closets. Let us be found at God's altar, in God's presence. Let us be found praying. We need to get to the stage where we say, I am tired, devil, of you pushing me around. I'm tired of you accusing me, trying to confuse me. I'm tired of you, devil, afflicting me, attacking me, trying to oppress me with fear and doubt, insecurities and feelings of low self-esteem. Get fired up and tell the devil no more. Pray to be set free. Pray for the victory. We must be a people with a cutting edge of mighty prayer, a people that disrupt and dislodge satanic forces that try to form strongholds in our homes, in our minds. I want to highlight the fact that one woman can make a difference by her powerful prayer. In fact, God has always used women for his kingdom and his purpose. A woman's absence is the first thing that God declared to be not good in creation. And that's because God knew the type of role that women would play in his kingdom. You know, I remember when I was younger, coming home early one day and finding my mother praying. And when I listened, I heard that she was praying for me. I learned that mom believed in prayer and also believed in me. Now, do you know what that does to a kid? It stays with you for life. And when I began to search for answers in life, when I became pressed with my back against the wall, those things came back to me. Those prayers, that practice of prayer. So moms, pray for your children. Teach them to pray too. Teach them early to love God's house. Your child needs to know that they are not alone. Without a doubt, God desires for us to bring to Him our prayers and petitions. And a praying wife, a virtuous woman, keeps the home together. One of the best things that a wife can do is pray for her husband. By telling him that you're praying for him, That simple action can produce amazing changes in a marriage or in a home. It invites an atmosphere of unity and love. So pray first. Before you speak about an issue, pray first. Before you speak on a matter that might be divisive, pray first. Pray for the wisdom to communicate clearly. A praying wife takes authority over her marriage. She doesn't allow the devil to come in and steal the joy and intimacy between her and her husband. In so many cases, ladies, we are the last line of defense against the onslaught of the attacks on the family from the devil. If you have been tempted or tested in your marriage, it's not just a coincidence. It's not just something that's happened by chance. Understand that the devil is trying to attack you and cause division among you. He is afraid of what a praying couple, a unified couple, who stand in faith and stand in prayer together can do in the kingdom of God. And one of the most important things that men should be praying for regarding their wives, their mothers, their grandmothers, is that their relationship with God will grow. Pray that it deepens 
and that it's strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Pray that she is strong in the Lord. Pray that she is spiritually fed, because her relationship with God, including yours, will affect your marriage. Stand together as a family and make sure that your house becomes a house of prayer.